from Woodsley Summercraft here. Uh, today I'm pretty excited. I have been asked to demonstrate, uh, in fact teach a class at uh, Lee Valley in uh, Windsor. So uh, what they want me to do is to uh, turn actually two items. I'm going to be doing two classes in October of 2017. Uh, so that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, one of them is to turn a clock and the other one is to turn a fluted bowl. Um, I've turned one clock in the past only, and uh, I've turned several fluted bowls uh, in previous videos. Um, the lady at Lee Valley, Heather is her name. Hi Heather. She gave me this piece of cherry. I haven't actually measured it. I think it's about 10 inches. Yep, it's 10 inches, and it is uh, four and a four inches, just over four inches. So, what I want to do is make a presentation clock for the class, so that anybody that wants to sign up for the class can go ahead and uh, visit the store and see the presentation piece that I make beforehand um, with this cherry. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this clean in half, and I'll actually be making two, two different clocks. Um, so, obviously, to cut this is kind of difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue gun and hot glue a flat board to one side so that it runs true and it doesn't want to try and get away on me. Uh, and then afterwards I can just pop that right off no problem. And then I'll cut it straight in half on my new Rikon Deluxe Bandsaw. I'm so excited about this. I haven't even used it yet and I've had it nearly two, two and a half weeks now. Haven't even cut a single piece of wood on it. Um, I don't know why I'm waiting, but uh, here, here I am going to cut my first piece of wood on it. Now, I did video a little bit of the unpackaging, but I'm not sure if any of you guys are interested in seeing that. But I can tell you a couple of features about this saw. Uh, it's a deluxe 14 inch Rikon saw. 14 inch meaning that there's 14 inches between the blade and the back here. So there's 14 inches of swing right here. Uh, the height is 13 inches. This bandsaw has got lots of features. It is loaded. It really is. It's ex I'm excited for this. The only thing I haven't got on it yet is a light. What I need to do is get myself some of those lights from Ikea, which are magnetic. There's actually a receptacle on the side here that I can plug a light into. And this is all metal so I can magnetize a lamp and have it pointing right at the work I'm working on. So uh, yeah, the features on this are fantastic. Uh, the setup is a little bit time consuming, but it's worthwhile getting it right. And I can go into that in, in detail, maybe in another video. Okay, so for safety's sake, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this board to the blank so that when I cut it, it doesn't roll on me. This should keep it nice and steady and safe. Uh, just using, uh, my hot glue, which is more than adequate to hold it to do the job that we're doing. All right, so I have got this bowl blank uh, hot glued to a flat board, which is what I'm gonna use to hold the board, hold it with and safely pass it through the blade. The blade is set to the height of the bowl blank, which is gonna give me two bowl blanks, basically two inches, so that I can make two clocks, approximately two inches thick. That has given me a beautiful cut and two bowl blanks. 
to make a couple of clocks with. Perfect. So I will now remove this board and get a clock made with this one for display at Lee Valley. First thing I'm going to do though is remove the tension off this blade, unplug it, reach around the back and remove the tension from the blade. Okay, so this is actually my second clock ever and uh, this one is going to be different from the one I did before. The, the first one I did was actually a long time ago. I'll put a picture of it right here, maybe you can see it there. Uh, I didn't video that because I made that before my YouTube channel was even around. But uh, basically, you need a block of wood and a clock mechanism. Um, the question is, how do you mount it to the lathe? That is the question. And there's many ways of doing it. I've seen several guys on YouTube doing it different ways. I think I figured a way how I want to do it. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to put it between the spur drive and the tailstock. And on the back side, which is actually the front, I'm going to turn myself a tenon, which will be about three inches to fit my larger set of jaws. So that will go in my larger set of jaws. So then once that tenon is made, about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to put my jaws, um, my chuck on the lathe, and I'll mount the face of the clock on the chuck then I'll be able to turn the back of it. By turning the back of it, I have to finish it completely with a mortise in the back, which essentially, again, will take my jaws in expansion mode, and then after it's all said and done and complete, the clock mechanism will fit into that mortise. It will be deep enough for the clock mechanism to go into the mortise, and there will eventually be the hole through the center, I can do that at any time because uh, center is always going to be center, I hope. Um, I can put my, my hole down the center, which I believe is 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths. I'll double check that before I actually do it. Um, okay, so now I have my bowl blank cut to approximately two inches thick, which is nice. It's uh, two and a quarter inches. The way I'm going to do this is to mount it between a spur drive and a tailstock. And I'll mount it here with my face, what I want to be the face of my clock, facing the tailstock initially. True it all up and I'll make myself a quarter inch deep tenon, which is going to fit my jaws in contraction mode. So it will be a tenon, not a mortise. is now trued up what I need to do is mark my tenon and what will be the face of the clock. I'm going to mark that there okay so that's three and one eighth now I need to remove a quarter of an inch of this material to leave my tenon It's about three and a quarter inches. I could probably go a little bit smaller, but I think that that's okay. 
So I'm gonna get this turned around and put into my truck now. Okay, so my mortise in the back of the clock needs to be about three and three quarters. So I'm gonna get that marked up now. Approximately there, we'll double check that. This should be for a mortise, three and a half. So we'll go just a hair bigger than that. Okay, so we'll make our mortise and we'll recess this just a little bit. So the only thing touching the wall will be the back of the clock. Okay, so the sanding sealer is dry. Now what I'm going to do is apply my Yorkshire grit to get that pre-finished foundation for Hampshire Sheen high gloss. So you know, just wipe this in by hand all over the back of the clock and then we're going to start spinning it on slow speed and gradually bring the speed up
and that is the back of the bowl finished. What I'm going to do now is get it turned around and do the face of the clock. I have now got the clock turned around in the chuck. What I need to do is true up this outside edge again, true up the face, remove the tenon, and then start shaping. I'm going to be identifying the hours around the edge and we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a moment. should be 8 inches, bang on, perfect, right, okay, so I'm going to pick the top of my clock which is here, basically I want this to be 12 o'clock, that's my 12 o'clock, Okay, so marking these out absolutely was uh, a little bit frustrating. I did it three times before I finally got it right. Um, it has to be perfect, basically. You have to have a perfect diameter. You have to know the exact circumference, and you have to know the exact distance between each of the 12 hours. Uh, I did finally get it, and uh, what I plan to do is to drill holes in each one of these, about three eighths of an inch into the wood and uh, I have this aluminum wire which is which I've sized and the drill bit that I require is 1164s so basically I have to drill down roughly three eighths of an inch into each one of these marks around this circumference and then put a small piece of this aluminum I will super glue it in and then we can turn it away and we should be left with a nice aluminum spot for each of the hours.
Okay, so I've got my aluminum plugs in there. They look quite effective. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a coat of sanding sealer on this, let that dry, and then give it a final pass with a sharp tool. Put three. I'm going to put three. And then I'm going to burn those lines with a piece of four mica. Okay, so this has been sanded to 400 grit, uh, sanding seal has been applied and I've just kind of given it a light sand over with 400 grit to remove any kind of uh, residue that might have been on there, any streaking or anything. So now I'm going to apply some uh, Yorkshire grit which will give us that 1000 grit finish, I think we all know that now. So. I'm going to apply this by hand over the front and sides. I was going to burn the edges but I decided not to. I didn't want to overdo it. I think sometimes simple is enough. Okay, I've got to try and get this Yorkshire grit in this front edge. And that will be this tin finished. I have to open up a new tin.
finally the components to complete this clock. I've got the mechanism here um, and it has the hanging piece on it there to hang it on the wall with. I'm going to pass this through the uh, center hole in the clock. If I can get that right. And then I can put my washer and my nut here. Okay, so next comes the the hour hand. Let's put it at 12 o'clock, which is this hour right here. And thanks for watching. That was a project that I did for Lee Valley. Um, I'm going to be teaching a course in October and uh, I'll be making something like this. I think next time I have learned uh, the aluminum is a nice effect, but it does tend to streak some oxidization a little bit. So there is a little bit of a streak mark there. I'm thinking what I could do is quite easily remount this to the lathe and put a bead over top of those aluminum uh, wires where they are. Um, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, from my perspective, I, I would prefer that, that it didn't happen. Um, I would like to see a, a cleaner finish, but overall, I'm very happy with this project. It turned out really well. As you can see, the clock face comes forward enough that the handles are not rubbing on the clock or anything like that. And uh, this is nicely recessed in the back. And uh, with a screw in the wall, this should be flush with the wall. And that's what this rim was for, basically, so that the back of the clock, when you hang it on the wall, the back of the clock is flush with the wall, which is what I wanted. Um, so I'm overall, I'm very happy with it. Um, and I think it will be a cool project for anybody coming to uh, a course to, to learn to make. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun to make. I'm glad you guys came along to watch me make it. And... Uh, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next project. In fact, I'm going to make one today, uh, part two of my spalting experiment. Take care. Bye now.